All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dudes of all teen ages, this is going to be the last part of my little uh, Kudo-kun video game collection update. Um, we're going to go over all of my Xbox games. I do have a Series X. Um, again, last year was fairly kind to me when it came to collecting video games and video game related things, and I was able to get quite a lot of stuff last year, especially around Black Friday. Now, I will fully admit, uh, since this is the third and last part of the series, um, my voice is a little bit raspy, um, and I am getting a teeny tiny bit tired, but you know what? I really don't have very many Xbox games here, and it feels a little bit weird to leave it off um, without doing this part as well, so we're just going to power through it. I really don't expect this to be that long. It's probably only going to be about 20 or so minutes, so let's just get into it. So, um, I have the Telltale Game of Thrones game right here. Um, you're going to notice that this is a trend. I would prefer to have this on the PS4. I am primarily a PlayStation gamer. I like the controller a little bit better, and um, I, like the, I like the system a little bit better than I like the Xbox, although I do think that as far as just... I mean, you know, I'm not going to try and start a war here, but... I think as far as just value goes, Xbox is beating the PlayStation still. They've got some slightly better exclusives. They've got Game Pass, which is a lot better than PlayStation Now. There are some things about the Xbox that are just way better than the PlayStation 5, in my personal opinion, even though I will personally stick to the PlayStation over the Xbox. So I've got the uh, Game of Thrones Telltale game here. I haven't actually played it. Um... Obviously, uh, I know this is probably the case for a lot of people, but um, Season 8 kind of soured my interest in the uh, <laughs> in this franchise. So I don't know when I'll get around to playing this. It's definitely not a priority play or anything. So we'll just have to get around to that when we get around to it. World of Final Fantasy Maxima. I had the original World of Final Fantasy on the PS4, and then I found the Maxima, which is the um, sort of deluxe edition of this game. Or, deluxe isn't really the right word. This is the, um, it's the better version. Okay, let's just say it. It's the better version of the game here. Um, I found it on the Xbox One. Again, this is another game that if I found it on a different system, I would have bought it there. But I really like World of Final Fantasy. I don't know why so many people are so rough on it. Um, if you've never seen it before, it's basically like a cute, chibi version of a Final Fantasy game where like you have um, all of the protagonists that you would see in a game like Dissidia or in like another Final Fantasy crossover game. And it's basically like a monster collector and battler, but with a little bit more Final Fantasy elements. It's got its really cool battle system where you're basically taking teams of uh, monsters and stacking them on top of each other. Like you've got large monsters, medium monsters, and small monsters. And your main characters here can actually swap between being a medium monster and being a small monster so that they can be a part of your team too. And it's just a lot of fun. I, I really don't know why people are so rough on this game. It's really good if you've never tried it out. We've got Torment, uh, Tides of uh, Numenera. Um, I really don't have any interest in this game, if I'm being completely honest with you. Um, but I got it for free as a part of a Black Friday sale, so there you go. Wolfenstein 2, The New Colossus. I heard this game was really good, so I picked it up. Um, I know that my usual rule for going through games like this is to uh, not play any of the games before the first one, because I like to go through the first game, and then that way, if there are any references or anything to the future games, I get them. But, but I mean, it's Wolfenstein. <laughs> like, I really don't care that much if I miss one or two references there. So, yeah, I haven't actually played this yet, but I have heard that it is um, one of the best games in the series. And every once in a while, I even I crave a good shooter, so I'll check that out at some point, I'm sure. Uh, Pillars of Eternity. I haven't actually put this game in my system yet, and I am very upset about how beat up it is. Um, I ended up getting this on uh, GameStop Black Friday sale online, and uh, it was shipped to me in not the best condition. I haven't actually played the game itself yet, but, um, I mean, I hear that Pillars of Eternity is pretty good, so looking forward to it. 
Crash Insane Trilogy. I don't like Crash Bandicoot as much as I like Spyro the Dragon, but um, I knew on Black Friday I absolutely had to get my hands on uh, the Crash Collection and the Spyro Collection. So I ended up getting Crash on Xbox and Spyro on uh, the PlayStation. I kind of like to spread out where I buy my games because, um, you know, storage space is still a thing. And uh, I do have um, the Xbox Elite controller. So I like to, uh, if I have the choice between Xbox or PlayStation, I normally choose PlayStation, but I have to make some of my purchases on the Xbox to make sure that I'm not running out of storage space and um, I'm actually taking advantage of my Pro Controller. Oh, sorry, I said Pro Controller. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, there's more of my fake gamerness shining through my Elite Controller. I have to make sure I'm getting some use out of it. Greek. Um, this is a game very, very reminiscent of Hollow Knight, but a bit easier. Um... It's pretty good, actually. I, I got about halfway through the game. I pretty much got to the point, like, right when you unlock the last character. But it's basically a game where, like, you play as multiple characters at once, and you solve some puzzles, and you go through a sort of Metroidvania-style uh, setting, and you just have a good time. Honestly, it's, it's not too bad. I'd say the story is a little bit weak, but you don't really need the story to be amazing in a platformer game. Okay, so I probably cut that out so you didn't hear it, but uh, there was, in fact, an avalanche behind me. Anyways, uh, here is Okami. Okami is basically a Zelda game. Um, it's one of my favorite Zelda-style games. Um, it's basically a game about old Japanese artwork where uh, you use something called the Celestial Brush to basically solve puzzles, fight battles, and um, overall, it's just a really, really good time. It's a very, very hefty length, too. I didn't remember this game being as long as it was, but it is, a, it is actually a fairly long game. Now, one thing that I will say is I don't like the console version as much as I liked the uh, Wii version. I think being able to use the motion controls to draw with the brush actually added a lot to the game, and I don't like the controls on a traditional, uh, traditional controller quite as much, but... Overall, it's a really, really nice-looking uh, upgrade, so I'm really glad that I have it. Yeah. Here's the Telltale Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, it's fine. I would actually say that this is one of Telltale's weaker games, in my personal opinion, even though I'm a huge fan of Guardians of the Galaxy, if you didn't see one of my previous uh, little episodes here. Um, growing up, I actually read the Guardians of the Galaxy comic books because it was one of the few comics that actually came to the town that I lived in. So, yeah, I mean, it's okay, but I would definitely say it's one of Telltale's weaker outings. I explained this in uh, my PS4 and PS5 roundup video, but... Um, I haven't actually gotten into Life is Strange yet. I do plan to. I do own pretty much all of the games now. Um, but I haven't actually gotten into it because I heard there's a collection of these games coming out soon. And I'm kind of waiting for that because I feel like it would be a lot more efficient to just play the collection than to play them individually. So I haven't gotten into this yet, but when the collection comes out, I'll give it a shot. Far Cry Primal. Um, this is another thing that I said in one of my other videos, but um, sometimes I get the itch to play a Far Cry game, and most Far Cry games since Far Cry 3 have been fairly similar. I would say that Far Cry Primal is probably one of my favorites in the series just because it feels a little bit different uh, with the whole like being able to control animals and um, that kind of thing. So. When I get the itch to play a Far Cry game, I normally just reach for the absolute cheapest one, or every once in a while, I'll play Far Cry Primal. Doom Eternal, I don't like first-person shooters, but I love this game. Um, it's very fast-paced, it's extremely fun, I suck real bad at it, I can really only play it on normal, I tried to play it, <laughs> excuse me, I tried to play it on a harder difficulty than normal, and uh, I, I got my butt kicked, so I'm bad at it, but I have fun with it, and at the end of the day, I think that's what really matters. Good old Dark Souls 1, 
Um, I mean, what can you really say? It's it's Dark Souls. Dark Souls is amazing. Um, I again, I, I kind of suck at these games here, but I love them to death. And uh, Dark Souls is just a classic. It's basically the Dark Souls of Dark Souls games. Move this over here now that we've got a smaller stack. Bloodstained is one of the few Metroidvanias that I actually fell in love with. Um, I really like the artwork for this game. I, I think it's a really beautiful looking game. And I think it really nails a lot of the aspects of games like um, Sympathy, Symp Sympathy, Symphony of the Night, and um, uh, Castlevania IV, and some of the like old, really classic Castlevania games. Um, I think it really nails them. This feels like a spiritual successor to the DS games, like um, Order of Ecclesia and such. So, yeah, I just really enjoy it. I wouldn't say it's, like, one of my favorite games, but I'm also not that big a fan of Metroidvanias. Um, so, yeah, I mean, if you're a Metroidvania fan and you haven't tried this out yet, I really don't know why you wouldn't. It's uh, pretty much... It's pretty much the best type of game, or sorry, it's pretty much the best game of that type that you can get nowadays. Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice. I've heard some very amazing things about this game, but I've never actually popped it in and played it myself. I saw it on sale when I was uh, Black Friday shopping, and I picked it up. So I don't really have too much to say about it. I am looking forward to trying it out before the second one comes out, but I just haven't had a chance yet. Indivisible, one of the coolest ideas for a game that I've seen. It's basically an RPG, or like a JRPG, but uh, it plays a little bit like a fighting game. So you basically have combos and things that you can do with your characters. Um, each character is assigned like a certain move, and then what you have to do is sort of chain the moves together to juggle your opponents. And I think it's a really, really cool game. Um, I don't remember much about the story. I know that I played a lot of this game, but I couldn't really tell you anything about it outside of how the gameplay works. So, I mean, that could be a ding against it if I can't even remember uh, anything about the story of the characters. But if you're just looking for some good gameplay, then that's where you're going to find it. I own Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Tenkaichi. Now, listen to me. I know I'm going to lose a little bit of... Uh, I'm going to lose a little bit of credibility here. I actually think this is a fairly refreshing game uh, in the Dragon Ball Z franchise. Um, if you've never played Ultimate Tenkaichi before... It's um, it's a much slower paced fighting game than other Dragon Ball Z games. But hear me out. So when it comes to Dragon Ball Z games, um, most of them come down to spamming special moves. So like uh, you you attack a few times and then you use a Kamehameha and then you attack a few times, you use a Kamehameha and you sort of just like spam these special moves over and over again. So they lose a little bit of their flair. But with games like this, um, you basically just do hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, sorry, hand-to-hand -hand combat, and then when you actually do get the chance to use a special move like a Kamehameha or a Gallic Gun or something, it's actually like a huge event. Um, and it has this big weight behind it, and it feels really nice. Um, you're not just constantly spamming beam moves or spamming special moves over and over in this. Um, it's mainly hand-to-hand -hand combat, and it is fairly slow-paced but then you build up to these like big Kamehameha moments and it feels really good. So I understand why people don't like this. You know, when you say slow paced Dragon Ball Z game or slow paced anime fighter, that's an immediate turnoff. But if you're a fan of Dragon Ball Z and you're just looking for something different, maybe look into this game. Maybe you're weird like I am and you'll actually uh, get some enjoyment out of it. Who knows? Warriors Orochi 3 Ultimates. Um, I own this game for one reason and one reason only. See, see that? See that right there? Let's see if I can, I can get you a little bit. Okay. So this guy right here comes from a game series called Atelier. Atelier is one of my favorite game franchises of all time. In fact, outside of Kingdom Hearts, it is my favorite game franchise. Um the Atelier games are, I really don't know how to sell you on them. They're like traditional JRPGs, but there's also this huge element of like gathering and crafting stuff. It's basically a game where you're an alchemist and um, you have to craft specific things to try and beat certain challenges. It's really good. If you've never seen it before, look into it. It's again, if uh, Kingdom Hearts didn't exist, it would be my favorite game franchise of all time. 
And he is my favorite character in the entire franchise. His name is Sturkenberg. I know his name sounds funny, but believe me, um, he is no laughing matter, okay? This is serious. He is, like, the coolest character in the entire franchise, and I love him to death. He's, like, he's my I'm-not-gay-but character when it comes to Atelier. Bulletstorm. It was some dumb fun for a little while. I don't, I really don't get the urge to play shooters um, that often. I really don't like shooters that much. Every once in a while, I'll feel like playing one, and this really isn't one that I ever go back to. Um, it exists. It was a little bit of fun while I played it, but I mean, I'm really not itching to ever go back and play it again. 13. I really only bought this game because I know it by reputation. This is a remake of a very old game that got some fairly decent reviews, if I remember correctly, and that's the only reason that I own it. Um, I've never actually played it before, and I really couldn't tell you very much about it, but I know it by reputation. South Park, Stick of Truth. I talked about this in one of my other videos, but basically, um, I was waiting to play the South Park games. I've heard that they're really good, but I was waiting to play them because um, I had never actually seen South Park before. And then um, I went and I actually started watching South Park, and I actually think the show is really good. Um, it's just as good as everybody said it was. There's definitely some elements of the show that I don't like or that don't work for me. But now that I've actually gotten about 20 or so seasons into the show, I'm looking forward to starting these games up and seeing if they're pretty good too. So Red Dead Redemption 2, I mean, everybody should own this game. It's really good. It's somehow like one of the best looking games on pretty much any console that exists, even though it's a last gen game. Um, I don't even know how you would possibly go about doing like an HD remake of a game as good as this. Um, how could you possibly make this game look any better? I don't think it can be done. In fact, I think the only thing you could do to make this game more atmospheric or uh, better in pretty much any way is to somehow make the online better, like make Red Dead Online a little bit better, but I digress. Um, I, this is a good game. Um, I, I haven't beaten it. Um, I have heard that it is crazy, and I know it is sacrilege to have not beaten this game. Um, but I was really happy about the fact that this was actually a prequel so that I could get into it. And I played it. It's really, really good. Again, it's super great. But something about me is I've never really been the biggest fan of uh, Grand Theft Auto style games. Um, I'm a very story based gamer, and that's just not what Grand Theft Auto really offers. Every once in a while, I want to go into a GTA style game, you know, boot up GTA 4 or whatever, and just go on a rampage, just go out, screw around for two to three hours. But most of the time when I'm playing a game, I'm doing so because um, I want to get engaged in a story and I want to feel like a hero. That's basically why I play video games. It's a sort of, uh, it's escapism. I like to escape into a world where I get to be a hero and I get to fight evil monsters and the gameplay is kind of secondary. But um, overall, I think this is a really good game. I definitely see where all the praise comes from. If I ever get around to beating this game, I mean, it'll probably be like an 8 or a 9 out of 10, honestly, but I just haven't done it yet. It'll happen. So yeah, I mean, I really don't have very much for the Xbox. Again, I'm not a big Xbox gamer. I primarily collect for the PlayStation, and then uh, Nintendo is a close second. And then finally Xbox. I like to switch it up and get games on the Xbox every once in a while to make sure that I... Um, am getting some use out of it. But that is going to about do it. Um, <laughs> I am about ready to stop. This was a ton of fun to do. I know it probably wasn't that fun for you guys because it's, uh, you know, it's basically just me talking. I know I sort of slur my words here a little bit. My voice is starting to hurt a bit. So um, I definitely have some controversial opinions that I'm sure I'm going to hear a little bit about on uh, Facebook or Skype or whatever. And um, and regardless, it was a really fun thing to do. I like just chilling and doing very minimum uh, effort videos like this, where I basically just get to sit down and have a ton of fun talking about some stuff that I like. So that is going to about do it. Um, if you enjoyed this video here and you want to prove you made it to the end, uh, tell you what, since I have so few Xbox games for this one, why don't you tell me about a game that I should add to my Xbox collection, or if you made it through all of the videos, 
tell me about a game you didn't see in any of my collections that you think I should pick up. And that will about do it, you guys. Uh, this was, again, a ton of fun to do. And I will hopefully see you guys later. Bye.